If you've been following us lately, you have noticed that we're trying to outline the easiest workflow you can follow, how to create your content marketing strategy, how to evaluate the performance of the content you've been writing. And today we're going to talk about how to fix the mistakes on your website, because if those two previous steps still don't give you the results you need, there's probably something wrong with your website. And today we'll see what and how to fix it. We have all been there. Whether you've been doing SEO for weeks or for decades, still there's always something that needs fixing. Uh, maybe your title isn't following SEO best practices. Maybe you have some duplicate content. Anyway, all these things are keeping you from going exactly where you need to be. And an SEO audit can fix most of these things because you need to know in order to fix it, what is wrong. But what is an SEO audit? An SEO audit is a top to bottom examination of your website with a focus on the factors that allow you to rank on search engines. This is a very in-depth process and it deals with incredibly technical issues. But today we're not going to go that much in depth. We're just going to go over the basics and I'm going to link in the description and above me anywhere possible, all the tools that I'll be mentioning and some very useful resources that will help you with the more technical stuff. SEMrush's site audit tool will be a major player in your audit. With this tool, you can scan a website and receive a thorough diagnosis of your website's health. There are other tools, including Google Search Console, that we'll be using as well. The site audit tool scans your website and provides data about all the pages it's able to crawl, including how many have issues, the number of redirects, the number of blocked pages, overall site performance and crawlability, and much more. The report it generates will help you find a large number of technical SEO issues. The first thing we're going to cover is your site's architecture, and also we'll see how to address the most common issues that come with it. Site structure is basically how the website is organized. A good site structure groups content and makes pages easy to reach in as few clicks as possible. It's logical and easily expanded as the website grows. And six signs of a well-planned and structured website are Number one, it takes only a few clicks, ideally three, for a user to find the page they want to find starting from the home page. Number two, navigation menus make sense and improve the user experience. Number three, pages and content are grouped topically and in a logical way. Number four, URL structures are consistent. Number five, each page shows breadcrumbs. You have a few types of breadcrumbs to choose from, but the point is to help website users see how they've navigated to the page that they're on. Number six, Internal links help users make their way through the site in an organic way. It's harder to navigate on a website that is not well structured. Usually, in fact, people get lost or confused, which is not a good experience and it's not what we want. When it takes 15 clicks or more to get from the home page to the page that you want the users to be on, then your hierarchy is way too deep. And Google considers the deeper pages in the hierarchy to be less relevant and important they're not going to rank high. Conduct an analysis to try and regroup the pages based on keywords and try and flatten the hierarchy as much as you can. Just as the website structure, the URL structure should be also consistent and very easy to follow. Next up, we're going to talk about internal links. In fact, as you improve your website architecture and make it easier both for people and search engines to find the content that they want, you also need to check the health and the status of your site's internal links. Your site has two primary types of internal links, navigational ones, often found in the header, footer, or sidebar, and contextual ones, included within the content of the page. A third type, breadcrumbs, is used much less often, but it can be a great addition to your website. Refer back to the site audit report and click view details next to your internal linking score. In this report, you'll be alerted of two types of issues. Orphan pages, which are pages that have no links leading to them. This means that you cannot gain access to them via any other page on the same website. And then you have pages with high click depths. The farther away a page is from the home page, the higher is its click depth and the lower is its value to search engines. You also see a breakdown of the page's internal link issues. You'll see errors, major issues that need to be addressed first, such as broken internal links. Then you'll see warnings, problems including broken external links and no follow attributes in outgoing internal links. 
and then you get notices. Issues you should work on after handling the errors and warnings, including orphan pages and permanent redirects. The site audit reports has helpful tips for fixing each internal linking problem. Your site's internal linking, but also the external one for that matter, needs to use the appropriate anchor text that uses the appropriate keywords that let immediately users understand where they are going, what to expect when they click on the hyperlinked word. In fact, what's helpful for users is often, if not always, also helpful for search engines. Let's move on and talk security. Data transfer over HTTP protocol is not encrypted which means it's not really secure. In fact, a third party attacker could definitely steal this information. So when on your website, people should never be asked to perform any payment or to submit any sensitive information over an HTTP protocol. The solution is to move your website on a secure server that is on an HTTPS protocol, which uses a certificate that is called an SSL certificate that is from a third party vendor that confirms that this site is actually legitimate. HTTPS displays a padlock next to the URL to build trust with the user. Semrush's HTTP implementation in the Site Audit tool can give you an overview of all the problems and issues that can come up with your site security and also advises you on how to fix them. Next up, Site Speed. Site Speed directly impacts the user experience and is also a ranking factor. Improve page speed and you will improve site speed. This is such an important task that Google even created its own tool to allow people to check the website speed, which is called the PageSpeed Insights Analyzer. And another tool worth looking into is the Core Web Vital extensions on Google Chrome. And by the way, if you haven't seen it, we made a video about all about Core Web Vitals. I'll leave it linked in the description here and here. And just in case you didn't know, we added after the video actually, a core web vital specific widget inside the site audit. So yes, you can check your core web vitals directly in site audit. To increase your page speed insight score, or just in general, your page speed and your site speed, you should definitely start by optimizing images. You have a few options when it comes to image optimization, including sizing images to their display size, which is not their actual size, and compressing them in order to avoid forcing a page to load a one megabyte image, for example. After images, focus on JavaScript and CSS optimization. You can use minification, which removes white spaces and comments to optimize CSS and JS files. Moving on, mobile friendliness. More than half of web traffic happens on mobile devices. Google plans to implement mobile-only indexing by the end of March 2021, which in case you haven't checked, it's this very month. This means that at the end of March 2021, we will only see index mobile versions of websites over desktop ones. So it's really important and it's very imperative that you fix all your mobile friendliness issues very much right now. When optimizing for mobile, you can focus on responsive web design, which is RWD, uh, which is basically making your website render well on different types of devices, or you can focus on AMPs, which is basically a stripped down version of your main website pages. AMPs run very quickly on mobile devices because Google runs them from its cache instead of actually sending a request to your server. AMPs definitely improve your mobile site speed, but also they have a couple of downsides. For example, you cannot earn any ad revenue from them and you usually can't access any robust, easy to implement analytics from them. Plus, usually desktop content and mobile content are different. If you use AMPs, it's important to audit them regularly to make sure you've implemented them correctly to boost your website visibility. The Site Audit tool tests your AMP pages for 33 issues divided into three main categories, AMP HTML issues, AMP style and layout issues, and AMP templating issues. In addition, the tool will also tell you if your AMP tag needs a canonical tag. So again, as at the end of every category, check this on your Site Audit. Duplicate content. If the site audit tool detects pages with 80% identical content, it will flag them as duplicate content. When your web pages contain identical information or nearly identical information, a lot of issues can come up. 
For example, an incorrect version of your page may display in SERP, or pages may not perform well in SERPs or they have indexing problems. Your core site metrics may fluctuate or decrease. Search engines may be confused about your prioritization signals, leading them to take unexpected actions. Pay attention to your content strategy and your site's taxonomy in the first way so that you can avoid creating duplicate content. You can use, for example, pillar pages or topic clusters that can help you boost your website's authority. To improve your site's taxonomy, you need to pay very careful attention to categories and tags, as well as pagination and also the sequencing of archived pages. One of the most common reasons is if a site has an HTTP version, an HTTPS version, a www version, or a non www version. All these may lead to duplicate content. Another reason site audit might find duplicate content is if you have very little content on these pages. In fact, if you have the same header and footer, the tool might even flag pages that have only one or two sentences in the copy. That's why you need to create and add unique content to these pages to actually avoid this issue coming up. Compare crawl and progress tab. SEO managers use spreadsheet, pivot tables, a host of tools to investigate and manage their websites. You should stay as organized as possible to catch unexpected changes and be ready for the inevitable Google algorithm updates. In the Site Audit Reports Compare Crawls tab, you can select specific crawls and analyze them to compare your results from two separate reports. The Progress tab features an interactive line graphs that showcases your website health over time. You can select specific errors, warnings, or notices to see how your site has progressed, or you can look at just the overall stats. And believe it or not, I don't know how long this video is going to come up, but believe it or not, we have not discussed everything. So if you really want to go in depth on this topic, I'm leaving a ton of resources in the description that I definitely suggest you check out because it's going to be incredibly helpful information. So we've been following this workflow where we've been trying to understand what to do with content, how to evaluate it, how to fix the site issues. And I know that there are tons of questions that you still have, like, for example, how can you grow? a blog or how can you make a website increase its organic traffic? Well, let me tell you that the next video on this very channel will be about this topic and I will not be the one answering this question. A very important person in SEMrush will actually talk about how we improved our blog that, believe it or not, was not performing as well as it does now. If you want to know more about that, and if you want to know more about a lot of topics like how to hire the head of an SEO team, how to outsource your SEO and so on, I suggest you subscribe to this channel and stay tuned because there's a lot of new formats coming up for you. So that's all. I'll catch you guys in the next one. Have a good day.